This is a behind the scenes of what's involved in producing a wet plate collodion photograph. In this video, I'll be making my daughter's portrait as an ambrotype, which is a photograph on a glass plate. Wet plate collodion was the dominating photography process used during the 1850s up until the 1890s. The first step is to prepare a 10 by 8 inch piece of glass. Onto this I'll need to pour a collodion solution and so dulling the edges helps it to stick and not flow off. It's also incredibly important that the plate is extremely clean. I go through a few stages of cleaning. The first step is to use the dishwasher once I've emptied it, as it does a great job of removing most of the dirt and any grease. Once the cycle's finished, I remove the plates and dry off any remaining water. I'm storing away most of these plates I've prepared and cleaned, and I'll leave one out to get some further cleaning. This is calcium carbonate mixed with ethanol and distilled water. It's used to get the plate extremely clean. It's important to get the plate literally squeaky clean on both sides. It takes a lot of time and effort. Now to set up the 12 by 10 inch camera. This is my Marion & Co limited view camera. It was built in London sometime between 1901 and 1913. This is the lens I've selected for this portrait. It's a Petzval design and one of my favourites, despite it having only a 9 inch focal length, which is sometimes a bit too short for portraits. The maker is Jules Vogel of Philadelphia in America, and it was made in the late 1800s. I now need to adjust the back of the camera so that it is roughly 9 inches from the lens to give me the required focal length at infinity. I'm turning the ground glass give me a portrait orientation. And fitting the dark cloth to allow me to view the projected image on the ground glass. Now to adjust the camera position with the spirit level to ensure it's not squint.
Here is a view of the grain glass from under the dark cloth. The world appears upside down. Time for my portrait subject to take her seat. She'll need to be very patient, this isn't a quick process. Now I'm focusing on the subject by moving the lens forwards and backwards until it's sharp in the ground glass. As the sitter needs to assume the correct focus position when the plate is ready, and also remain very still during an exposure of seconds, a head brace is a useful tool to mark the position and support the head to help the sitter remain still. I'm using a loop for fine focus adjustment. Into my darkroom now, it's a walled off corner of my garage. Health and safety is important when dealing with potentially hazardous chemistry. I wear an apron, safety glasses and gloves. Safety glasses are really important when dealing with silver nitrate, as are the gloves if you don't want to have lots of black stains on your hands. Unfortunately I don't have mains water in my dark room, so I have a 50 litre copper urn full of water. The plate needs more cleaning, but this is the last step. Isopropyl alcohol to remove any remaining dirt. It has to be very clean, otherwise the collodion layer in the photograph could lift off the plate later in the process. I use a brush to dust off any paper towel lint. The plate is now ready. My subject sitting very patiently. Now the plate has had the edges dulled and is perfectly clean. It's time to flow the plate with collodion. It's a mixture of plain collodion, ether, ethanol, cadmium bromide, ammonium bromide and potassium iodide. Pour the plate in one go and tilt the collodion to each corner in turn. And then pour off the excess into a separate bottle. It's important to rock the plate to prevent the collodion forming ridges as the collodion starts to set. wicking off any excess collodion from the edges. The plate will remain wet through to the final photograph, but the collodion needs to set slightly and become tacky. I'm checking this by trying to form a mark with my thumb. The plate goes into a solution of silver nitrate and distilled water to sensitise. This will make it light sensitive. Everything up until this point can be done in daylight. 
It remains in the silver bath for at least three minutes. The plate is now ready to be removed from the silver bath and loaded into the plate holder. This must be done under red light only, as it is now sensitive to much of the light spectrum. The back of the plate must be dried, we only want silver nitrate to be on the collodion side. Now I'm loading the plate into the holder, which will allow the plate to be taken into daylight without exposing it to any light. Last minute focus check. I need to place the lens cap on the front of the lens. This will be my shutter. I've got to move the ground glass out of the way to allow the plate holder to be fitted. The plate holder slides into the camera to create a light, tight seal. There is a slide that can be removed that exposes the plate to the dark inside of the camera, ready for the lens cap to be removed when focused light will hit the plate. Now to guesstimate the best exposure time based on experience and luck. The sitter can continue to blink and breathe during the exposure as these don't adversely affect the result. The lens cap is removed and then replaced two seconds later. Some exposures can be much longer, sometimes 10 seconds or more, but this is a fast lens and so it's fairly brief. The slide of the plate holder is closed again, now back to the darkroom.
Water is used to stop the development. Only a small amount of developer is required. It will be poured over the plate. The developer is a mixture of iron sulphate, distilled water, ethanol and acetic acid. Now it's time to remove the plate from the holder. And start a timer so I can time 15 seconds development. It's important that the developer is quickly poured on the plate and that it's moved around. This is a bad example of me doing it. I was a little rusty and the developer needs some more ethanol to let it flow better. But the result wasn't too bad. You can now start to see the highlights appear. And now the mid-tones and the start of the shadows appearing. The 15 seconds is up and so I halt the development in the water bath. The plate must be rinsed thoroughly to remove all traces of developer. It's now no longer sensitive to light. Time to fix the plate. Initially, the negative image disappears, but then a positive image emerges. A final water bath to remove the fixer. And here is the final image.